Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayomi Masachas Gitin Daf Vav. We are holding on the sixth line from the top Amamar. Let's go back and review the halacha we learned yesterday regarding Lishma during the Ksiva of the Get. Afilu Nichnas V'yetzi Kol Hayom Kuloi Kasha If the Shaliyach who is now ensuring that the Get which he will deliver was written Lishma with the intent of using it specifically for this Isha. So if the shliach is not there the whole time, he's in and out, that's also fine. Says the Gemara Man, who's going in and out? Ilim is shliach, is it in fact the shliach walking in and out and not present throughout the entire writing of the get? Well, of course it works. He doesn't have to be there 24-7. Hashta hu bebais v'sefer barliya. Because look, the b'raisa, in the previous illustration tells us, well, even if the shliach is standing on the first floor and the sefer on the second floor and he overhears that he's doing it l'shma, the l'chazili, despite the fact that he's not in his line of vision, he has no visual observation of what's going on. Amriz kasher. You're telling me that it's fine. But of course, it goes without saying. That if he's actually watching part of the time, even if he's in and out, is there any need to say that it's fine? Of course it is. Ella Seifer, apparently, was speaking about the Seifer himself. He starts to get for Ruvain, walks out, comes back in, we say it's okay. Pshita, of course, why not? Just because he's in and out. That should detract from the kashas of the star. Why? Why should it be a problem? He went out to the marketplace and met some people. He went out and came back in. Perhaps I would suspect perhaps somebody else with the same name asked him, you know, commissioned him to write the get for him now. And when he returned, he had the other fellow in mind and not the first person. Kamash and the Chilishes were not concerned about that. Itman, we have learned. Bubble. How do we treat a get which was delivered within bubble? From one province to the other province within bubble. So it was long distance delivery, but within bubble. Do we have to say before nechtav or not? Rav Amar, Ki Eretz Yisrael Gitten, when it comes to Halachas of Gitten, we treat it like Eretz Yisrael, skip the Befanei Nechtav and the Befanei Nechtam. Ushmo Lamar No, Ki Chutz Laaretz, we treat it like the rest of Chutz Laaretz and Befanei Nechtav is required. What's the Machlekes? Leib Abok Amifliki, perhaps the Machlekes revolves around those reasons presented by Rav and Rav as to the initial uh, concern which generated the Halacha of Befanei Nechtav. The Mar Savar Vishain Bikin Lishma, Rab follows Rabba's approach. The concern always is that perhaps the people out in Chutzlords are not well versed in the intricacies of Gitten. They're not sure about Lishma, and therefore we're concerned that it wasn't written Lishma. That applies to ordinary territories. But Babel, oh, we have Tamit Khamim and Babel, Vahani community, they're fully versed and learned. There's no concern there. Leave out the Bafani Nikta. Umar Savar Shmuel disagrees. Holds like Rava. The concern with long distance delivery of Gitten is perhaps we're not going to find people familiar with the handwriting and the ability to verify and certify the handwritings. Well, above all, the same issue applies. Since it's long distance, we're going to have a hard time accessing people who are familiar with those handwritings. Vitispera, how can you suggest that this is the point of Machlik? Harabi is like the Rabba. We've learned the other day that Rabba, although adding the concern about Lishma, of course agrees with the basic concern of Rabba about Eidim Mitzuyin Lekayim. He how can, in this case, Rav tell us, don't worry about the Bifani Nechtav because of Lishma, which is not concerning us in Babel. Well, what about the Eidim Mitzuyin Lekayim, which is a concern even in Babel? Ella rather says the Gemara, the Kuli Alma Bin and Lekayim, you're right. Both Rav and Shmuel agree with the concern of the Kim Hashtar, the Kim HaChasimais. However, Rav Savar Kivin Dikim is Sifta, since we have Yeshivas in Babel and lots of travelers back and forth, Mishka Shrichi will find people that are familiar, that recognize these signatures. Shmuel Savar, Shmuel disagrees, Ms. Sifta, Bigir, Sayyid, Tridi, the Yeshiva boys that are learning, they're busy with learning. And they're not uh, paying attention to the handwriting and the documents being written around them, and therefore there's no advantage to Babel over. The rest of Chutz Laaretz and Befani Nichtav has to be said. It's Nami, we have learned likewise, 
Omar Rab Abba Omar Rav Huna Asinu Atzmenu Bebavol we considered ourselves in Bavel, just like Karat Yisra with respect to Gitin to Gitin, Mechi Asa Rav Bavel. Once Rav came to Bavel, Rashi says there was a yeshiva in Sura that Rav established in Shmuel had a yeshiva in Ardo. Uh, Tosis learns a bit differently. Mechi Asa Rav Bavel doesn't necessarily mean literally Rav, it means to say Rabbonim and Bali Torah. Rabbonim and Rashi Yeshiva showed up in Bavel and there was uh, an influx of learning and travel between the yeshivas. Mosiv Rav Yermia. Bebekasha. How could you say Bavel is different? How could you say Bavel is like Eretz Yisrael? Rav Yudah What did our Mishnah tell us regarding the boundaries of Eretz Yisrael? Mi Rekem Starting from the town of Rekem, going east, is considered Chutz Laaretz. For Rekem Kemizroch, and Rekem itself is treated as such as well. Me Ashkelon Ladarim, from Ashkelon going south, for Ashkelon Kedarim. Me Akhelon Tzofen, starting from Akha going north, is considered out of Eretz Yisrael territory, with respect to the Chiyav of Ephanei Nechtav, of Akha Ketzofen, Akha as well, is included. So basically, anything north of Akha is treated like Chutz Laaretz. Where was Bavel situated? Let's find it there at Yisrael Kaim. To the north of Eretz Yisrael, the Chsiv, Ayem HaShem Eilai, Mitzvah Tifas Achara, from the north, from Bavel, the attacks on Eretz Yisrael will begin. Bottom line, Bavel is in the north. Utnan. And although we have the Mishnah which says, Rabbi Meir Eimer, Akoi Ke Eretz Yisrael, the Gitten, that Akoi is treated like Eretz Yisrael with respect to Gitten, Okay, but feel Rav Meir like Amar ba Akoi de Mekarva. Even Rav Meir only considers Akoi to be like Israel because it's close by. Ava Bavel de Merachka loy ba Bavel, which is situated at a distance from Israel. Of course, there is no no shita which holds that we consider it like Eretz Israel. And how can you tell me Bavel is treated differently? Says the Gemara, who Moisev lo b'mufarakla, Rav Yirmiyah, who presented this question. He actually presented an answer as well about Mevavel, although we treat everything to the north like Chutzloretz, like but we make one exception, which is Bavel, because of the Chachamim that were prevalent in Bavel and the uh, Bali Torah, and the travelers back and forth to learn Torah, and therefore it is treated differently. Until what point is it considered Bavel with respect? to this halacha, what's the boundary? Just like we find Machlekes between Rabbi Shmuel in a different Masechta regarding the territory of Bavel, um, which, you know, the area within that territory is considered um, to be a Meyuchas place, place where, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's considered free and pure of any impurities regarding Family, family lineages. Kach machlekes legitin. The same regarding gitin. We have a discussion regarding the exact boundaries of Bavel. Rav Yosef Amar no machlekes machlekes liyich. Not this agreement between Rav Shmuel in terms of the boundaries only pertains to the lachos of yichus. Avali gitin when it comes to the lachos of gitin. Different call everybody agrees. The Arba Tinyana the second um, batch of Arava trees. The uh, Gishra. Uh, near the um, certain bridge. In any case, they knew exactly where that was, that landmark, that's, that denotes the the edge of the Bavel territory regarding the halacha of Ufana Nechtav. Here comes an interesting configuration. Rav Chizda Matzrich, Rav Chizda required Ufana Nechtav to be said, when a get was brought, me'aktis, fine, from this town, they'll be ardushir to the other town within Bavel. But in the reverse, not. Umi be Ardashir, but a get which was delivered from Ar- Be Ardashir, which was in Babel, lacked his to the other town, Aktis find Loy Matrich, no Befani Nichtav is required. Interesting configuration here. So it's only one way, not the other way. How do we explain that? Lemakasava, perhaps he holds. Like Rab. It's a Lishma issue. Well fish ain't bikin Lishma, Vivahanigmiri, and the people in Be Ardashir are uh, educated. So a get delivered from Be'ardashir poses no concern. How can you say that? But Rabbi is like the Rabbah. Rabbah agrees with Rabbah's concern about certifying the Hasimis. So if these places are separate territories and there's not much traffic between them, right? Yeah. Then 
whether it's going this way or that, uh, we have the same concern about the uh, chasimahs, which uh, will not, you know, will have difficulty re- verifying the chasimahs down the road. You're right. We're going with the concept of kiyam hachasimahs. Okay, even Rabbi agrees with that. So the question is, why is Rafani Nechtav only applied to the get going this way, not the other way? Listen to this. Vahani kivan da azli l'shuka da hasam. And since the people from Bay Ardashir are frequent, frequenting the town of Aktisvain, you know, they go shopping there. That's what they do their uh, shuk uh, shopping. So it turns out that the the local uh, residents of Aktisfine, they, uh, they 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 become familiar with their visitors' uh, signatures and handwriting because they're coming there and they're signing their receipts and their documents. Hanach, so the local people of Aktisfine, yadi bechasimus yada dahani, they're familiar with the handwriting of their visitors, basically the people from Be'ardashir, who are visiting their town. And therefore, when a get is brought from Be'ardashir, featuring the chasimus of the Be'ardashir people, and arrives at Aktisfa, and people from Aktisfa are fully knowledgeable, they're familiar with those chasimus, and therefore you don't have to say B'fanei Nechtav. But the other way, it doesn't work. Vahani. But the... Bay Ardashir people, Bidahanachlayadi, they're not knowledgeable. They're not familiar with the handwriting of the Aktisfin people. My time and why? Bishukaya Tridi, they're overwhelmed, they're busy buying and selling that their you know, their market day. They're totally uh, preoccupied with the wheeling and dealing of their of their shuk. And they don't pay heed, they don't pay attention to the handwriting of the locals. And therefore, when I get arrived from Aktisfin to be Ardashir, the people in be Ardashir are not familiar with the Chasimus of the Aktisfin people. We're concerned about Kiyim HaChasimus. Therefore, you have to say B'fan Nechtav. So again, bottom line is we have two towns. The be Ardashir individuals would go to the Aktisfin town for business. So in Aktisfin, they recognize the... Uh, Chasimus of their visitors, and therefore, when a get arrives from Be'ar de to Tisfoin, we have people to be Makayim the Chasimus, but not the other way around. Says the Gemara, Rabbi Baravu Matzrich. He required the Farai Nechtav to be said, Me Arsa la Arsa. If a get was delivered from one side of the street to the other within Babel, Rav Sheshes Matzrich Meshchun Lishchuna, even from one group of houses to the other group of houses on the same side of the street. For Rava Matzrich, Baisa Shechuna. Rava went a step further. Even a local delivery within the same uh, cluster of homes needs to have B'fana Nichtav said. Says the Gemara, why? But Rava, didn't Rava tell us the reason is because of Ki Mashtar. We're talking about, you know, around the corner. Why would you be concerned about finding people to verify the Chasimus of their neighbors? They're surely... Recognize their neighbor's handwriting? No, Shani Bnei Mechoyza Denaydi. We're speaking about the special town of Mechoyza. And all these Amoraim lived in Mechoyza, right? So these Mechoyza individuals are very busy, very business, busy business people, always traveling. Uh, you know, always going out of town, and therefore nobody has the time to focus and recognize the local people, even their neighbor's handwriting, and therefore. We treat it like it will be from one territory to the other. To the other. Rav Khanan Mishtar, Rav Khanan, would tell us the following story regarding Rav Kahana. Rav Kahana, I see Gita. Rav Kahana brought a get. Yudana and Rav Khanan is adding that he's not sure exactly whether it was from Surah to Narada, of course in Bubble, but was it, was it from one place to the other, Surah to Narada, or the other way, Imanarda, to where the Surah. Also, I commit the Rav. In any case, whatever it was, Rav Kana approaches Rav with a shayla. Do I have to say if it's within Babel? Or perhaps not, because it's Babel, and Babel is treated differently as we learned before. He says, don't worry. Babel is like Eretz Yisrael, you don't need to say it, but better to say it. 
if you were actually, you know, a mahader and do say you've, uh, you know, you've gained, uh, you've accomplished, you, you've gained much. Why? My avdes what does that mean? Because although you don't have to say it, but you're gaining because you're preempting any, any, uh, preventing any future trouble. The asi bal ma'ar, because even if the husband will come along now and complain, lo'yem baby won't pay attention to him, being that it's already after the fact, you have testified as to the uh, kashras of the star. Because the sanya, as we learned in Ibraisa, that even when it's not required, uh, but if he does go ahead and say it and he testifies, it's, uh, it certainly helps us. Ma'as about the mechot shem, get of made Rabbi Shmuel. There was a story of a fellow bringing a get in front of Rabbi Shmuel. Amr Lai, he asked him, Tzorach ane loyma b'fani nechtam, b'fani nechtam, b'fani nechtam, b'fani nechtam, b'fani nechtam, b'fani nechtam, b'fani he says to him, I have a question. B'ni, my son, meichan, ato, where do you come from? Amr Lai, he says, I come, me, um, Rabbi, me kvar sisoy, I came from kvar sisoy. Amr Lai, he says to him, you know what? Tzorach ato loyma b'fani nechtam, b'fani nechtam, you should say it. Even though it's an Eretz Yisrael, say it in any case, shalik tzorach ato loyma, so that the Isha should never have to look for Adam to certify the shtar. That was the story. After the petitioner left uh, the room, Nichnas Lafan Rabbi Loi. Rabbi Loi. A Talmud Rabbi Shmuel walks in. Amr Loi says to his Rabbi, Rabbi, Valik Farsi Soi. That's part of Eretz Yisrael. Mavlas, but Chum Eretz Yisrael. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, within the territory of Eretz Yisrael. A Kroiva. Litzipoyri Yisrael Me'akoi. It's even closer to the main. Uh, Center of civilization, Eretz Yisrael, which was at that time in Tzipori. It's even closer than Akai is to Tzipori. With Tanan, we find Rameo, Ima Akai Ketzrol the Gitan, even Akai, which is further than the, um, further than Kfar Sisoy from the center of, of uh, Eretz Yisrael life. Rameo considers that to be part of Eretz Yisrael. Akai Ketzrol the Gitan. Vafil Rabbanu le Pligil the Rameo, even Rabbanu disagreed with Rameo. It's only Alba Akai the Meraka, which is a bit further. Alba Kfar Sisoy the Mekar, Velib Kfar Sisoy, which is around the corner. Which is part and parcel of Eretz Yisrael life, of course. Everybody would agree that uh, it's part of Eretz Yisrael. So why do you uh, require B'fanei Nechtav on a get delivered from Kfar Sisoy? Amar Loi, Yisrael, Rabbi Loi responds. Uh, sorry, Rabbi Shmuel responds. Shtoik b'ni shtoik, please, my son, remain silent. Hoyel v'yotza adama beheter, yotza, since it uh, emerged beheter, it was concluded beheter, which basically means like this. True. It wasn't required, but it was definitely beneficial and very helpful to say before the Nichtav and to certify about the heter and the kashas of the shtar so that the husband can never come and claim otherwise. And that's why I did it. It wasn't required, but it was extra credit and it certainly helped us. Asks the Gemara, So what was Rabbi Lai's kasha? Ha'iu nami... You see, Rabbi Shmuel, in his initial response, didn't say you have to do it, he just says do it. And he added the word, clearly indicating that it wasn't required, it was just recommended. So what was Rabbi Lai's question? The answer is, like, Simo Kame. When they told Rabbi Lai the story, they didn't actually <laughs> tell him the whole story, they forgot the last part, which was the crucial part of the story, to indicate that it wasn't really required, it was just recommended. Bottom line is, we find from this halacha that in fact, it makes sense to recommend, even if it's not required, and that's in line with the previous story with Rav Kahana and Rav's recommendation to say it, even though it wasn't required. Shalach le Rav Yasser, Rav Yasser, who resided in Eretz Yisrael, sent a message to Rav Chiz. Get an aboim misham lekan. Ain't zrichan leimar b'falei nechtav b'falei nechtam. Gitten, which are delivered from there to here from Babel to Eretz Yisrael, do not require B'fanei Nechtav. Why? Lame Kassava, perhaps. It's because of Rav Yasser holds like Rabba. L'fish ain't b'kin l'shma. The reason is because of l'shma concern. V'hanig mir, the ones in Babel are learned. They know about l'shma. It is, perhaps, can you say that's the reason? For obviously the Rabba. Remember, Rabba holds a Rabba's concern as well. Long distance delivery poses a problem regarding the Certification of the Chassimus. Elodokuli Amabin and Lekame. You're right, everybody holds of the concern of the Kiyam Mashtar. So, why is a get delivered from Babel to Eretz Yisrael? We spoke before about within Babel itself. But they were speaking about Babel to Eretz Yisrael. Why is that not a concern? You're given the Ika Rabbim, the Salki, the Nachsi. Since we have a lot of uh, travelers going up to Eretz Yisrael, going back to Babel, 
it was a well-traveled route, Mishkach Shrichi, you can always find Edim to certify. And therefore, you don't have to say B'fanei Nechta. Amar Av Yosef. Man Leimolon, the Rav Av Yosef Bar Samachu. Who is to say that Rav Yosef is reliable, he's a big enough authority for us to rely on his uh, heter, V'oid, another problem I have here. Ha'iyud Ashach Le Rav Yudah. There was actually an incident where Rav Yasser sent a message to Rav Yehuda regarding a complaint about the people in Babel. Bnei Adam ha'ilin misham lekan. The Bnei Adam, the people that come up to learn, the Talmudim that come from Babel to here, to Eretz Yisrael, and stay here a long time and sort of ignore the plight of their families and don't engage in having more children with their wives. Hein kimu ba'atzmon. They're um, fulfilling with what they're doing and their behavior, they're actually a fulfillment of a pasuk which isn't really so uh, complimentary to them. They're treating their kids like just worthless, they're not having, as she says, they're not um, giving enough importance to having kids, they're treating the kids like something you just give it for the zayna and a daughter for wine. Basically, he was criticizing this type of lifestyle. Why they do? What are they doing in Eretz Yisrael without their families? Okay, but the point here is because of Lebelo Yisertet, even though he's giving him a pasuk, pasuk in Yoel, which generally relies underlining. It was a special halacha that, uh, in order to ensure the neatness of psukim, you have to actually uh, make some sort of mark, a line, upon which you write the words of the pasuk. And he wrote it in his letter without the sertet. That's a very basic halacha. Well, Rabbi Yisrael, Rabbi Yisrael tells us, Shtayim, you know, two words of a Pasuk, which can be written pretty much aligned. Kaisvin, you can do it without the Sertut. Sholesh, but once you get a bit more than that, you write three three words of a Pasuk in Kaisvin, you don't do it without Sertut. Must listen to the Bryce, so we have a, a Kula, Sholesh, Kaisvin, three words are okay. Arba and Kaisvin, four not. So basically, if Rav Yasa sent a message, including a, a and included a Pasuk without Sertut, that... Uh, Casts doubt on his. Uh, it, it questions his, uh, you know, his uh, scholarship and his uh, expertise in halacha. Only Abayi Sabai responds to Rav Yosef. That doesn't really uh, necessarily, uh, you know, ruin his uh, reputation in our eyes. Atu You mean to say anybody that doesn't know Rabbi Yitzchak's halacha about the two words and the three words? Lav gavar cannot be considered a great man? That undoes it? Bishlami Musa the Tali Besvar. I can understand you would have an issue with something which is, you know, Svara based. Lachai, that would make sense that a person that uh, doesn't have proper insight, I would not sort of arrive at that same conclusion. As, you know, is accepted by the Allah, that would uh, indeed pose a question mark because a Talmud Chacham should have the, uh, the way to figure out through Svara. But this is different. How Gemara he? This halacha that Rabbi Sak tells us regarding Sirtut. It's Gemara, which means it's something which he accepted from his Rebbe. Who Gemara Lishmile? Who says uh, every Amoira has to know every Gemara? No, it wasn't yet recorded. It was, they didn't have a Shas. So just because he doesn't know this specific halacha that Rabbi Sak happened to learn from his Rebbe, that means Rav Yasser is not a re- uh, reliable authority. V'oid, I'll tell you even more than that about the greatness of Rav Yasser. Ha, listen to this. Rav Yasser, who the ask him al yode, we find that even Hashem in Shemayim agreed with Rav Yasser, and Rashi says, "Legalois leisoid lechavin dvarim astubim alamitas." We find that. Hashem revealed the secrets of Torah to Rav Yasser. We have the whole story about Pelegash Begiva. So in short, what happened was this uh, woman who was uh, associated with this man and um, she sort of uh, didn't conform. She um, didn't live up to his standards. We'll see soon in what, uh, in what way. Okay, so because uh, she was intimidated by him, she uh, ran off back to her parents. He went back to get her. On the way back, they stayed in this place, um, this Binyamin area, the Shevet Binyamin, and uh, she was abused, and that generated the whole war within uh, Klal Yisrael to punish those perpetrators. 
and it resulted in a massive loss of life. So the pastor says like this, So his, uh, his pelegesh, which is a term used for an isha who is not really fully married, in any case, this isha who lived with him, batizna, she strayed. Um, she didn't conform. We have two ways to explain it. What, uh, what did this man discover? What uh, violation, so to speak? Rav Yosu Amar Zvuv Matzali discovered some sort of fly in the food. Rav Yosu Amar Nima Matzala a hair. Okay. And the Gemara explains soon exactly what this means. Va'ashkechir Rav Yosu Al Yo. So we have this machlekes. What exactly happened? What was her, um, you know, uh, violation? Was it the uh, Zvuv? That's a Rav Yosu. Was it the uh, body here? So Rav Yasser found Aliyo. Amalei, he asked him, "My Kavod Hakadosh Baruch what's the Hashem doing right now?" Amalei, he says, "Guess what? Asag bePelegish begiva. Hashem is now um, learning, so to speak, the topic of Pelegish begiva." Umay Amar says, "Rav Yasser Aliyo, what's he saying?" Amalei, Aliyo responds, "Guess what? Hashem is quoting you. Hashem is saying, 'Av Yasser bni, my son of Yasser, kachu Aimer. He holds that this went wrong. Yainus bni, my son Yainus, and kachu Aimer. He holds it was the Nima, not the Zvu." Amalei, so Rav Yosef asked Elio and Avi, "Chas v'shalom? How could you say that? Umi kasveke kamishmayu? Hashem doesn't know what happened. Hashem is not sure. He's quoting our opinions, so we don't know." But Hashem, Amalei, so Elio tells him, "Elu elu." Both opinions are Hashem's words. Divrei lekim chayim, because in fact both are true. Hain, it's true. Zvuv matzah. Initially, he found this fly in the food. V'layikpid, and it didn't really uh, set the bells ringing. He. Uh, he tolerated, he swallowed that. Nima Matzah, but once he, um, he found another violation, he discovered uh, some sort of hair uh, that really got the uh, alarms going. Nima Matzah of So really both are true. It was a progressive, uh, you know, uh, program. Um, Rabbi Yehuda, why is it so that the Zvov didn't arrange him, but the Nima did? Zvov Bekara. The Zvov he found in the food. Nishkeferloch. So he managed. But the hair was in the makam of the erva, which were generally removed, and he was concerned about that. More than he was concerned about his food, when it comes to the fly, okay, that's uh, unclean and, uh, you know, re- repulsive. Okay, but he could handle that. Venima, but the hair out of place, akanta, that can pose a sakana, it can injure the man, and therefore, that really got the bells ringing. Another shot, why the nima concerned him more than the zvuv, idi the bikara. Both were actually discovered in the, in the food. But Zvuv, okay, Einstein, it could be just a mistake, an accident. A Zvuv flew in here. Uh, he, didn't really, uh, he didn't really lose himself. But the hair found in the food, that's really negligence, and that really got him upset. A person should always be careful not to be overly intimidating. Don't cast awe and fear and shock in one's home. Conduct yourself softly and gently with your family. Look what happened when a person overdid it. Look what, what happened there. Her husband got all mad and she went flying and because of that the Pilo Kama River Voice Misra, look how many thousands and thousands were killed because of that story. Amar of Yudha, Amar of Kalamatl Emo Yusera Besech Besech. If a person conducts himself in this manner with Emo Yusera, it can lead to terrible Averis because of his intimidating manner. So if a bold day shows Averis, it can generate three Averis. Gili Arayis, Rashi says perhaps the Isha um, was hesitant to be toiled from her tumma because of the cold weather and because of her. Um, being scared of him, she'll pretend that she was terrible, and that brings him to Gili Arayis. Shvich uh, Domim, we can bring to killing, like the story of Pelegesh Begivo, or like Rashi says, perhaps she'll, she'll be running away from him and stumble and kill herself. Shabbos, that can happen if, you know, if something wasn't prepared properly before Shabbos, and because she's petrified of her husband, she'll actually cook on Shabbos without his knowledge. So, just take it easy and play it safe. Okay, let's review today's daf. We learned about the fact that the cipher can walk in and out. We're not concerned that he'll change the program of his get. We had a chiddush that bubble is treated like Eretz Yisrael with respect to uh, a gitin that's um, Rav Shita because of the uh, um, 
prevalence of the Bnei Yeshiva, so we're traveling back and forth. Shmuel disagrees, the Bnei Yeshiva are learning and not paying attention to other things, and therefore it doesn't really help us much. We had the interesting story of the two towns. So one way is required, the other way is not required. We learned that Mechayza people are very busy and they're not paying attention to the Chasimus, and therefore, even though it's in Bavel, but Befani Nechtav is required. We learned that it's always good to say Befani Nechtav, which preempts any further discussion, any further challenges on account of the husband. We had about the uh, people traveling from Babel to Israel, and since uh, it's a frequently traveled route, there's no concern about the Shmo, about the funny nechtav there. And we learned about the Allah of Sirtut, about Elu Ve'elu Diver Lekim Chaim, and to take it easy in your home. And we have much Hatzlacha after the Shema on that. Hatzlacha Rabba and Besaros Tavis.